Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. It's Mary Jane. Let's talk about Black Ink Crew Season 7, Episode 8. OMG, Sky and Genesis just took my heart away. Like, oh, my God. It was so wonderful just to see that reconnection with Sky and Genesis. And, you know, her and actually Sky being stable enough to help and support her kids and actually having them on the show, too, as well. Even we see Des with his little um, confessional. So it's very good that she's bringing in her family and she's um, bringing in her children, too, as well. So they can get a paycheck and they can receive some attention. Um, attention to as well and basically build their brand too as well so that and or, and pro probably get a spinoff show that would be great too as well because it seems like Young Bay is going to get a spinoff show with her and her mama and Rob but it, do you guys I don't know tell me if I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm looking too deep into it but didn't it just see like Rob's Rob's mother-in-law you know um Young Bay's mom was like you know treating him like shit, like she was kind of like racist. Like he came in the house, she threw his food and shit away that she didn't pay for. And, you know, she, and I'm thinking that since she's from Korea and, you know, she was talking about that they grew up so dirt poor and didn't have any money that she wouldn't be throwing food and shit away. And then on top of that, she went and put the clothes in front of the TV where he was, you know, watching TV to, and so to, to, you know, stop his enjoyment and watching TV. Like, why would she do that? Why would she? And you could see her looking and doing it. I don't know if this was edited to do that. And then when he actually, you know, gave, you know, her a hug and shit like that, she made the most nastiest face and she felt like she was disgusted. Like, she didn't want this black man to be hugging her. And she said to him, don't you ever, she knew some words in English. I forgive you, don't ever touch me again. Like, I don't know, maybe it's me, but I, I just think she don't like Rob because his ass is black. And Rob is a good man. And then she married a terrible man where her daughter had to run to United States to seek refuge to get away from her father, if that's actually true. So anyways, you guys tell me what you think. Tell me if I'm looking too deep into the situation because sometimes I'll do that. So let's get into it. So we got Teddy, Donna, Alex, Tati, Walt. Basically, um, they're in the shop, they're talking, and they're talking about, you know, um, Tati was talking about how she had an ice cream sandwich with a donut, and then Donna was like, was it hard? But Donna was talking about, was the donut hard? And what, and then what was like, and Teddy was like, oh, the penis? What are you talking about, Donna? And then Donna was like, oh, these guys are a bunch of pervs. And what was like, how can you call us a perv when you came in here one day and said you stuck a, a hot sauce bottle in your JJ? I was like, what remembers everything? He keeps, he keeps stats. He keeps stats of everything and everything that's going on in the situation. So, moving on from that situation, I was just like, mm mm mm. Then a C's and you know Miss Kitty, they walk in the shop and they and C's was like, what y'all talking about? And um, they was like, we're talking about you know the team building, you know our weekend trip. What went down with that? And so C's gave them the lowdown that you know um. Toke was going through some things because her alleged abuser called her and, you know, did some, and, and she totally flipped out, you know, because she talked to Donna, she talked to Miss Kit, she talked to Miss Kit, so, you know, so, you know, Cees was explaining the story to them, and then Donna was like, oh, I don't want her to work here, she's crazy, who wouldn't want a lunatic to work here, and all this other stuff, basically, and Donna was like, I don't want to hear about her, I don't want to hear about her, and basically, Donna doesn't really, and Donna, doesn't want Toke there because she actually wants Jada back. Sees is confused. He's 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 like, what's going on? Like you have you're sensitive to Jada's situation and you're compassionate towards her, but you're not compassionate towards Toke. Oh well, see, she knows Jada. She has a friendship. They used to live together. She's pregnant. They cool. They run the streets together. She doesn't know Toke, and she just thinks Toke is the object that's standing in Jada way because you can get rid of Toke, but then you're not gonna hire Jada back. So Donna is not actually being. She's not being. Fit. She's not being right, but she also, I believe Donna sees that it's shady how, you know, Jada got fired because really she was fucking with Ted and then after they stopped messing around, Ted wanted to go on to Tati and he was messing with Tati because that's the reason why they got into the fight up there in Miami because Teddy was double dipping in the shop and then it was a good idea to get rid of Jada and then Jada didn't help herself by, you know, being aggressive, but Tati's the one that threw champagne in her face, threw shit in her face. They had a whole year after last season. And then they they meet up in you know um Louisiana they meet up in New Orleans and she throws beer and shit in her face and then after that she shows up to the club and boom she gets fired 
So I think, you know, Donna don't feel like it's fair about the situation. She's trying to stick up for a girl because it's not like the regular type of job. Any other job, you you stick up for your friend like that, you're going to get fired. <laughs> Unless you're related to the owner. <laughs> so it is that situation. Basically, you know, um, she's just letting everybody know that she's been sexually assaulted and things like that. And I was just like, damn, you know, it's, it's just really sad. And, um, Sky, <laughs> and then, you know, so C's was, so Donna's arguing with C's talking about, you know, I want her to hear, and C's was like, I don't need to be arguing with you, I'm still the boss, you're the employee, so I don't have to talk to you, basically, and he's just, he, C's is just straight dissing her, but at least he's not calling her a B-word like he did in New Orleans, he straight kept calling Donna the B-word, and so, um, Sky, she meets up with her son, Des, he's so cute, I'm glad he's not in the military, I'm glad, I'm glad, <laughs> I was so happy that, you know, he, you know, is being discharged or whatever or not being accepted to the military because he has dry skin, you know, some type of form of dry skin, especially when he's wearing his uniform. I don't know how true that is, how real that is, but if he was actually in combat and he has that dry skin, maybe that'll be a distraction from him actually, you know, going after whoever the government wants him to go after the fight. So Sky's happy. He's going to go to college. Basically, he's living in a house, he's living in a house full of people or whatever. And, um, he's up here visiting his mom. He's going to, you know, you know, go to college next year or something like that. That's what he's going to try to do. And so we'll see. And then basically, um, Des lets her know that he's been talking to Genesis and everything. And Sky's just sitting there looking like she's a nineties girl. She looks like she's a nineties girl, an eighties girl with the sunglasses and the wig on and the high ass boots up to her thighs. And Des is just such a cute little teddy bear type of son. And uh, even though he's older now, basically she just wants the best for him. She don't want him to be no scammer. She don't want him to be no thief. She don't want him to be out here in these streets hustling. She don't want that for him. She want a better life and she wants to assist him and help him any way that she can because that's her baby and he calling her mama. I was like, oh, how so sweet. They hug or whatever, and Des lets her know that lets her know that he's been chilling out with his brother Genesis because he really wants his brother and his life and everything. Then on top of that, because you know, um, Genesis is here for he's in New York for like a music event for a music festival because he wants to be a rapper. Um, maybe New York is a good place for him to be a rapper, but he also need to have a plan B too as well. Maybe plan B is having his own, you know, TV show, and, you know, basically, you know, bringing, you know, C's bring his daughter and like, she's already on the show on, um, um, Sky have her two sons on. It's going to have a, a younger generation watching the show too as well. I don't know how good that is, <laughs> but having a younger generation, you know, capturing their attention to as well so it'll give the show more longevity too as well if they can you know touch the older audience middle age audience and the young young audience so we'll see how that goes with that situation i was like okay um so des is like okay and mom is like okay they hug and shit so it's so cute to see that we was at such a different place almost a year and a half ago especially when they just came out with the sons and just to see how the relationship has evolved and also to see how Sky is very sensitive, you know, towards, you know, um, token showing her compassion. And that's not Sky, you know, she's showing a lot more compassion to maybe the mothering skills are coming, but she's still going to twerk. She's still going to turn up. She's still going to shake that ass. She's still going to scream. She's still going to yell because she know what behavior got her to pop on this show and got her to get all this other stuff that, you know, these accolades of, you know, wealth or money that she's able to support and help her kids and have a house for them and a home for them. And probably a lot of other stuff that she's probably doing for her mom too as well. So that's a good look. And so we get to talk. Toke is in her apartment. She got a little nice apartment in New York too. And basically she's about to do some body painting and, um, the body painting only lasts for like a day. If you don't shower, if you don't use lotion, if you don't sweat a lot. So I don't know what that was about, but the painting, the art, um, the body art was actually really, it looked nice and actually it can last for a day. If you actually use the legit art paint, the most expensive one where it doesn't wash off. If you rub up against somebody or if you put on a shirt or it, and it doesn't, you know, like melt off or, you know, mess up. So she does that. And basically she knows everybody at Black Ink knows what happened to her. So she's going to, C's gave her a couple of days off. So she's cool with that, that, yeah, you just got a job. You just got hired and shit and you getting days off. Black Ink is the place to work. A lot of bosses ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's good when you have someone that looks like you and understands you. 
um, as your boss, that's not a coon. So it's cool. <laughs> and, um, so we have that situation <laughs> and, um, yeah, we'll get to, <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> when Rob went home and he came to the door, the grandma was like, this is good food. I cook good food for you. But she didn't say it like that. And that, that, that shit was just so funny when she put that clothesline and the house to dry the clothes right in front of Rob while he was watching TV. He threw the pillow down and then he was calling Bay Bay. And the mom was like, he threw the pillow down. He was angry. And basically <laughs> she was telling him he bad food and all types of stuff. Uh, and she, and she was like real funny towards him. And so Rob gets up, he leaves. Rob is like, I can't even be a man in my own house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was the situation with that. And so then um, we get back to the shop. It's C's and Donna. They meet up, they're talking. And so basically, you know, C's is just like, you know, he wanted to talk to Donna about the situation, try to get Donna on the same page where she can actually have some compassion for a token, let her know, like, you know, what's going on? Are you going to chill out? Are, you gonna, are we going to really be having this argument? And basically, Donna is basically giving C's, you know, ultimatum telling her, telling him that it's either her or a toke or whatever. And basically, and she was like, all the shit I did for you, all this time I've been rocking with you, I've been around, you let me know how much more important I mean to you. Like, when you get somebody an ultimatum like that, they, you know, you're putting, you're putting their back up against the wall, and that's like a real hard situation too as well. And um, it's just not going to work out that way. And Donna thinks she has more pull than she does. Um, and then on top of that, she's not a great tattoo artist too as well, but she is a loyal friend to C's or whatever, and she's been, you know, friends. But she also did, you know, did go over there and, you know, go down on Duchess and everything, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, basically, C said, you know what, you know, I don't need time to think about it. It's Toke, it's her. And she goes, I knew it, I knew it. You know, I was just like, damn, man. You know, Donna's thinking that she's really doing this for a friend and she's trying to really be smart about it, but it's not really being mature because one minute ago you was bet you needed a place to stay. Now you got a you got a secure place. You're probably getting more money this season too as well. And then just to try to throw your job away over, you know, to over um Jada. Maybe, you know, Jada should find a different job so she won't be stressed out working at Black Ink, being around, you know, Teddy and Tati, because Tati's jealous of Tati is intimidated by Jada. And plus, no other woman wants another woman around that her man or somebody that she's messing around with is in the same building, in the same place, in the same work location. And also, Teddy's going to feel uncomfortable too as well. So it might be a good look for Jada to actually look for somewhere else for work. Or maybe work at a different shop, work at another Black Ink shop, you know, work out, work, work at the upscale, you know, shop or whatever. <laughs> So we have that situation and Donna's feeling some type of way. She's mad. She's upset because C's really did choose, you know, token. We know C's was going to do that. That's just how we, cause he hire and he fires Donna, you know, like it ain't nobody's business. <laughs> and so, um, we have that situation and then we have, um, Tok, she comes to the shop basically and everybody's at the shop, you know, C's is there, Donna's, you know, C's is there, Miss Kitt's there, Tati's there, Teddy's there, Walt's there, um, Sky's not there, and Donna's not there, and I don't know why they got rid of Kevin, so anyways, um, she comes in, and she goes, I'm really, you know, I, um, she comes in, she goes, hi, and then, you know, Teddy says, how you doing, she goes, I'm fine, he's like, you sure you fine, she was like, well, I'm not, you know, I, you know, I really act up last time, you know, I really went off, I, and, and basically just saying that, you know, it was something that she, it was uncontrollable, um, that happened that she was sexually assaulted and she said she was crying. She said she was trying to get through and she was like, I'm not a kid anymore, not a kid anymore. So from there, it tells me there was somebody that molested us probably in her family that's close to her, that's in her family circle. I could be a coach, could be a teacher, could be an uncle, brother, cousin, you know, um, auntie is somebody in her family that knows her that she's related to me I feel like it's somebody that she's related to and she knows that's why they have their number and that's why she was saying that she's not a kid so something that happened a long time ago 
or it could be a really close family friend, but it's somebody that's really close to her that knows her and her family. And so she's been keeping this secret and now the secret has been exposed. And basically she apologized to everybody in the shop and they all accept her apology because damn, that's some real shit to go through. And even, you know, Tati was like, yo, I'm sorry that this happened to you. Like I couldn't even imagine. And I totally get, I totally understand. And your story probably will help a lot of women. And yes, Tok's story will help a lot of young girls, a lot of women that are probably going through the situation because we know a lot of people have been abused and it probably would help a lot of young men too as well too that has been abused too and um, maybe it'll make people think before you know they try to do something devious to somebody that is really would affect them you know when they get older too as well so that's a serious situation so it's all forgiven and she got her job and everybody's cool with her and you know when Donna was trying to make the case to sees that you know Tok is all crazy I don't want the psycho around me this and that. I don't know what could happen my, I feel for, I fear for my safety sees was like you've been punching and fighting every, all, every like all the time what you talking about your safety who you scared of Donna Donna you beat the shit out of Tati you fought everybody you could fight you even fought Sky you didn't play around so you know Oh, Caesar's like that. That argument is mute right there because you be up in here fighting, girl. So don't even go there. <laughs> so we have that situation go on, and then we have Des, Des, and Genesis. They meet up. They're having a conversation, and basically, you know that they're talking. Des, you know, Genesis asks, you know, Des, what, what's he doing up in New York? He's I'm chilling with mom. And Genesis said, How is it? How is that? And it was like, how it, like, he wanted to know how it is, like, having, a like, your biological mother, being with your real mother, you know, chilling with her. Like, how is it? Like, he, it's something foreign to him, you know what I mean? And I was, and so that you can see how serious hurt that he was and disappointed to as well. And he's, and so Des is trying to tell him, like, yeah, man, you're just going to have to forgive and move forward, man. Forgiveness is the best key. And Des is, and that's what Des says. And Genesis is like, yo, it's been 15 years, no call, no birthday cards, no how you do doing like the 15 years is a long time 16 years is a long time man for that he was like you know what I'm not even upset no more I'm just disappointed and Des was like yo it feels good you know and he was like we're chilling we're, do we're hanging out we're doing stuff like man you got to forgive you got to let go you got to move forward and for Des to be a young guy he got he gets it he gets it totally and he's not holding on to that anger it's just that Genesis took it to the heart and plus Genesis was a lot older when he older than Des when he got separated and people are just different period and he remembers a lot more so we have that situation <laughs> I was just so happy just to see you know Genesis he looked good Des look good they're chilling up in New York and you know Sky's around the corner you know what I'm saying so that was all good I was just like mm. That's good. So we get Alex and Donna meet up and Donna basically wants, you know, Alex to ball cart the shop basically and not show up to the shop to prove her point that sees, you know, should take her side and basically listen to her. And Alex was like, no, I got kids. To, I got a kid to feed. I got bills to pay. I got probation. She's got me out of jail. You do you, baby. I support you and you and I believe in you. And you write and you everything. But, you know, I got a job to do. I got responsibilities. <laughs> so we have that situation and that situation was cool then we finally get young bay she goes out with the crew everybody comes up except for mel we didn't really mel wasn't really in this episode at all and so everybody comes out they go chill at the bar teddy you know um teddy miss kit walt and you know sees sees and um young bay they go out drinking they chilling having a good time and everything they're having fun and then they see teddy over there kissing all up on top they're having a romantic passionate kiss like you know like they've been doing it and doing it for a long time and they can't wait to get home to do it because that alcohol is getting into their blood and making them want to do it <laughs> So, and what was like, I knew something was going on because every time I turn around, they're doing this and they cut to the cameras at all these different scenes where Walt is just sitting and watching, you know, Teddy and Tati make out. So it's really weird and funny too as well. And also what else was funny when, you know, Miss Kit and, um, Young Bay and, um, what's her name? And Tati was talking about, you know, actually, you know, using their breasts, you know, to have sex with the penis and stuff like that. And basically Young Bay's trying to do everything possible to satisfy Rob because right now she can't have sex. And so, and it was talking, it was putting their breasts together. And then, you know, um, Tati jumped in the 
Tati, she jumped in conversation and the young baby was like, your breast is like, is like rubbing two nipples together. You can't do nothing with that. The young baby gets in a confessional talking about she got like two raisins, you know, <laughs> she got like, <laughs> she was like, she got like two raisins. <laughs> she got like two pool balls. She got like, you better off using your armpit. <laughs> I was like, yo, a young baby started to go in on Tati not having any breasts. Like, come on, like doing that challenge with the penis and the breasts. Like, oh, no, they really went there with that situation. <laughs> so that that was funny, too, as well. And so then <laughs> Donna, man, Donna is just tripping, man. Don, Donna, don't lose your spot. Don't lose lose your job on this show like come on and then we have young bay her mother and we have rob they actually you know rob actually dressed up and the you know chinese custom he actually cooked he put the food on the table and he gave it to mama she put it in her mouth said mm -hmm, good she chewed it spit it out <laughs> and when he came when he went over there to hug her it was like she was like oh, she was making all types of faces all types of faces i don't think she really likes rob that much or or they're editing it, it to look that way too as well. So we have that situation. And then um, once we get from there, we get to the shop. And, you know, it's um, it's the same people at the shop. It's Young Bay, It's um, Miss Kitty and and um, Tati. They're there at the shop. And then Sky walks in with Genesis. And they're like, Genesis is so cute. Not Genesis. There was like, Des is so cute. And, and Sky, Sky was like, I know my son look like a piece of meat, but stay away from him. He ain't just a piece of meat. I know he's cute and everything. And then, you know, Young Bay was moving her body. And she had that short pink dress on and she was moving close, you know, to Des. And she was like, you better get that stinky pussy away from here. That, that, that thing is still raw <laughs> in six weeks or something like that, she said. That thing is sick. That's that. I get that. You better get that, 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 that pussy out of my son's face. Is still six week weeks raw or something like that. That's all she said. That steak raw six week pussy. <laughs> I don't know what she said, but it was just like too funny that you know Sky went there. And everybody was like, "Oh, I can't believe she said that." Young Bay was like this, but you know Sky always taking shots at Young Bay. I don't know why she don't like Young Bay that much. It seems like she don't like her, but she's always taking shots at her, and so. We have that situation, and then guess who walks into the shop? None other than Genesis. Genesis walk into the shop. Sky don't know what to do. Like she's kind of she's getting mad because she thinks it's gonna be uh, a bad situation. And you know, Des was like, you know, listen, I talked to you know Genesis. Everything is gonna be good. He want he wants to see you too as well. We want to um he wants to talk and you know be a family basically. You know what Des was saying, and then she just looked and she was getting kind of. You could see, like, she kind of released. She kind of just let loose. She kind of just, you know, laid back and was just like, okay. And then he was like, Ma, I want to talk to you. So they go outside and talk. And he said, I had to, I couldn't come correct to you because I wasn't a man yet. I had to understand some things. So I don't want to waste no more time together. I don't want to waste no more time. You know, we put them years behind us. And, you know, I had to get myself right. I, I was just disappointed. But, you know, I love you, Ma. And they hugged. Sky was just crying. It was like a dream actually coming true when you can actually both have both of your children in your life and back in your life, too, as well. Even though she did give them up. And she gave them up because she thought that she can offer them a better life. Now they're back in her life. And she now she can offer them a better life, too, as well. And help them in ventures of things that they want to do and actually provide a safe place for them if they need it as well and it seems like Des is going to need a safe place if somebody in his apartment gets shot and I know Des has got somebody pregnant I know I heard he got somebody pregnant but this is not the first time that um Genesis was up in black shop and in black ink shop because he was there a couple of weeks like you know like a couple of months ago when it was summertime or whatever he had on a white t-shirt he was in black ink just chilling and it was just teddy and c's in the shop and genesis had walked in or whatever so anyways they hugged and it's like damn thank god like they need this like they're too, they're both young they still got all their p's and q's they're still healthy and all that other good stuff it's time to make up it's time to move forward because you know what you got to live you got to let the past go and focus on your future and she just cried 
and she and she just bent down. She was just crying because it's it's just like if you win the lottery, like you, you know, like all that heavy weight is off your chest. You know what I'm saying? Like you know things are good now. You know now you can work towards something. Now you have what you asked for, and all you have to do is just cherish it. So it was a good episode. But next episode seemed like it's gonna be fire. We see Melanie's, you know, baby daddy's gonna be throwing her out, being mad, talking about he don't even like her no more, and dead somebody gonna get shot in his apartment. It's gonna go ham. Peace of my one love.